What's up guys? Welcome back to Supercars of Westchester. Sorry for the incredibly long upload here, but the C8R has officially debuted this past weekend at the Rolex 24 at Daytona International Speedway. And prior to the kickoff here, Corvette had their annual presentation, which focused on talking about some of the benefits of going to a mid-engine design layout, as well as different ways Corvette enthusiasts can order these cars. There was some Q&A from the audience and overall some very good information regarding this car. If you guys missed this, you can check it out right here. It's about 38 minutes long and I did not want to make any edits or leave anything out. I realize that some things may be more important to different people than others, so feel free to skip around the presentation if needed. Hope you all enjoy it. I believe, you know, and here might not be up to speed on this, but someone pulled the tires off of a C8. <laughs> Took all the tires. Now, I gotta tell you, I got my opinion of that. Lee, Lee might not agree with me, but I heard because I have inside sources. There's a lot of Goodyear guys. <laughs> That's what I heard, the Goodyear guys got it. So uh, I guess they wanted to know what the compound was. What can I tell you? But you can tell your friends, if any of have those wheels and tires, they do not fit a C7. They were smart enough to make them for C8 only. They won't fit a C7 or a six or a five. So they're in your garage, just want you to know that. All right, I know the main attraction, what you came for today, is to talk and hear from Rosanna. No way. I mean, Rosanna is like in charge of accessories. She is the accessories lady. I bet she does a lot of shopping. Do you love shopping? Uh, not so much, actually. My husband does more of the shopping in the family. Oh, hey, true confessions. We find these things out here on the show. And we also have with us the Harlan Charles. How about a round of applause? But with Harlan comes Kirk Benny. So let's give a round of applause to the guy who penned your future Corvette. What's that? We'll start off with Harlan. All right. Hey, I'd also like to uh, mention how many people have called the Corvette Concierge at all? So we have here Chelsea Sanders, who is kind of one of the friendly faces you may have talked to or we talking to, and she does a great job for us and, and with the whole team. Uh, well, they call the, themselves the Wolf Pack. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted you to meet her and get in and uh, questions and everything. They do a great job of uh, answering questions and uh, they send a lot of them to us too, so help out as well. But thanks, Chelsea. So, okay, um, one of the things, okay, as you know, eighth generation Corvette, the first mid-engine production Corvette ever. And this is one of the early charts, uh, you know, when this was first proposed. And what we wanted to do, we created a new type of sports car that only we can do, only the Corvette team could bring this to you, where we combine the things that everybody loves about the Corvette with exotic supercar attributes that people like about exotic mid-engine supercars. And what we do, put that together in a new package. So think about the things people love about the Corvette. The Corvette, although not inexpensive, is a car that people work, that can hope to attain. That's always been our mission, to provide you with your dream car, but also make it so it's something that you can hope to obtain someday. And of course, it's also a car, although great on the track, it's also great to drive on long trips, drive every day. You can, it has a lot of bandwidth, and it's a sports car that can, you can use it for everything, even good storage space for a sports car, and the things that people love about it. But we wanted to add exotic car attributes, uh, the proportion, uh, the, the rear weight bias, which helps traction, helps performance, helps acceleration, helps track times, uh, the lighter front has great steering feel, lower cal for great visibility, which makes the car fun to drive, and of course, a uh, driving experience. So we put that together at the eighth generation Corvette, and a lot of people, and we, this was a, a very old chart, when everybody keeps come up to me and said, you guys hit it out of the park, Grand Slam, and that was our goal. So it's, uh, it's good to say, so it's good to go. <laughs> 
So um, we're going to show this more later, but I just want to let you know, if you go on our Corvette uh, website, corvette.com, there's a lot of videos on there that a lot of the team made. It talks about all the aspects of the car. So make sure you check out those, uh, those videos and uh, give you some more in-depth information. So we'll skip that for now. Let's go to the next one. So one of the things we did with the architecture, as you see, when you could, this compares the seventh generation to the eighth generation. Might be a little hard to see, but um, there's a little triangle uh, below on the seventh gen, you see below the knees, and by the eighth gen, it's below the back. So what that is, that's the center of gravity of the car. So what this change in uh, weight distribution allows is for you as the driver to be at the center of gravity of the car, and which really creates a better uh, driving experience and it, it helps both ride and handling and that you don't feel as much impacts as you do because you're now you're not behind it now you're right on top of it the other thing uh, that this shows is the visibility we're able to improve the uh, visibility about five degrees downward vision which is which is a, which is really a great uh way a great feature that you experience every time you're in your car being able to see the apex on a track or just being on the great sight lines where you're driving normally really enhances the whole experience off a car that already for a front engine car had great visibility. So let's go to the next one. Uh, so we talk about visibility, a lot of people we talk about, you know, one of the magazines said that it's like going from the locomotive to the fighter jet has really been our, our target. So one of the other things we did, we heard a lot of people say, you know, we wanted to be able to accommodate more sizes and shapes of people. So we actually added a full inch of seat travel to the car, as well as almost doubling the seat recline angle of the car. So it goes from uh, so it's 17 degrees, from about nine degrees to 17 degrees, and that really helps uh, I talked to a lot of people that said they weren't as comfortable in the seventh generation and they're a lot more comfortable in the eighth generation. So that was that's another benefit because on paper a lot of people thought, oh, is this car going to be tighter and smaller? But actually it's not. So other people think people worry about storage and, you know, maybe your favorite beverages you may want. So there's plenty of room in the front storage for your favorite beverages or a. Uh, it's also designed to fit um, you know, the airplane size uh, carry-on roller bag, as well as maybe a backpack or a computer bag on top of that. I'll tell you, on my trip, that's what I get. That's what I get for the storage. I'm happy with that. Just the wife takes the trunk. She wants the whole thing to herself, and it works out great. And she likes that none of her stuff touches my stuff. <laughs> so you see in the rear, you know, you can hold golf clubs. Actually, you hold two sets of golf clubs. We heard that a lot uh, for people who like golfing, so that's important. Uh, so it does hold the two sets of golf clubs as well, or you can hold the two carry-on bags as well. And actually, um, uh, Rosanna was responsible for the five-piece luggage set that we had in the previous car, and that will actually fit in the new car. So don't give away your luggage. If you get a new car, you can use that in the new one. And then the roof panel, of course, we wanted to keep the Corvette removable roof panel that we all love with three latches, and that fits in the trunk as well. And engine, LT2, small block V8, 495 horsepower with the performance exhaust, 470 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60, under three seconds, actually 2.8, uh, 2.9 with the Z51, some of the magazines have gotten 2.8, 194 miles an hour top speed. But don't do that on I-95. <laughs> For lovers. <laughs> and the the um, engine appearance package. A lot of people are asking about this on the on the uh, coupe. We got the. We really wanted the engine to be like a jewel. So on the left is the standard package. On the right, you see you have a little hard to see, but they have carbon fiber um, inserts as well uh, as uh, the lights on the uh, hatch that light the engine up. And you can light that up with the key fob if you want to show the engine off. It's really a nice. Uh, feature. Z51 performance package. If you're interested in uh, going to the track, got to have the Z51 uh, performance package. Uh, a lot of features. The most visual, of course, is the spoiler and the splitter. Um, the 
um, performance suspension, of course, which is mechanically, you can set the ride height. Uh, it is available with magnetic ride control as well, larger brake roll rotors, and Z51 uh, logos on the calipers, uh, extra cooling, specific uh, final drive ratio as well. Of course, the, the Kirk designed the uh, car to have over 400 pounds of downforce by top speed. So it's, a, it's really, uh, for the Z51, it's the most we've ever had. Uh, and, that, and, that, and it also includes the performance exhaust as well. And we have 12 colors. A lot of people have talked about the different colors. It's the first time we've had uh, a full 12 colors available. Our newest colors are the um, Accelerate Yellow, of course, racing, we love yellow, and uh, Rapid Blue, which we have on display at the Experience Center. How many people have been over at the Experience Center? All right, great. So you've seen that. And then on the turntable up top, there's the yellow car, and of course we have the Zeus Bronze, which is a new color for Corvette, more of a luxury GT type of color, you know, I mean, it's a car, it's a car a different persona, come new for Corvette. We also have different kinds of seats. So uh, one of the things somebody brought up to me, which I think was great, we should have identified which cars had which seats on display, because some of those had the competition seats. And again, very, uh, gives you a lot more uh, support. Again, not for everybody. They're, they're very supportive if you're really into track driving. The new one we've done is the middle of the GT2 seat, which maintains the comfort, because you have all the comfort of the standard GT1 seat, but adds to some of the cool features and the up level features that you get with the competition, like the carbon fiber inserts and Napa leather and, and the appearance. So a lot of people, that's the best of both worlds. You get kind of the perform, you get kind of the look and the features of the competition and the comfort of the GT1. GT1 is the standard seat, great all around uh, seat, leather, still full leather and um, great for both street and track use. Hey, this is, uh, when you when you get in the car, this is what we call the startup screen, if I'd be cool to see that. When you get in your new Corvette 2020, this is the you know, first thing you'll see when you start off. Go to the next one. And then uh, on your gauge cluster, there's actually different configurations depending on mode. So it just went from tour, to sport, you can see it has a more uh, detached twist, so you get the red line more vertical. And then for track mode, it's very serious. We look, we looked at what the race cars are doing. Really, um, a lot of digital gauges get the information quick to you. Very functional. So you have the different uh, setups. We go to the next one. Uh, I won't get too much into this, but basically, you can configure what gauges you want. Of course, it comes settings from the factory. But you can, with, a, with the uh, Tour or Sport, you have your choice of two gauges. If you're in track mode, a little bit smaller, more concise, you can put four gauges up there so you always have the, the, the uh, information you need. The one I really like that we have, you can keep there all the time, it's a tire pressure and tire temperature gauge that you can leave on there. Use that. I think that's really great to have it and not have to search through menus to find it. So we have that all the time. And then on the right side, uh, just to show you, you can configure that as well. You can, there's a trip computer, there's performance uh, computer, you got zero to 60, lap timer, which hooks up to the performance data recorder, a friction circle. There's an audio function, if you like, just for the radio, which makes your thumb wheel a seat button, so you can use that if you're, if you're listening to music a lot, like I do. And of course, you can get your maintenance information. There's a lot of option settings. This is where you configure which gauges you want. And you know what? If it's just getting too complicated for you, you can just hit simplify, and it just all goes away. You just get the basics. So I know some people like that. It's too much. On the column. So on the performance data recorder, uh, how many people have performance data recorder today? Great, so you know, you know how great of a, of a system that it is. So we've built off that, we came out with that back in 2015. The new generation uh, has some new features. It's, it's got full 1080p uh, uh, resolution. 
You can save the start finish lines and that has a database, you can save those. And we're going to, I'm, I'm working with Cosworth, we're going to have a group of ones that are already there that you can download or you can share uh, people that go to the same track. You can also have an automatic recording uh, option. A lot of people have asked for that. So if you just want to have it running all the time in case something interesting happens when you're driving, you can just have it set to auto record as well. And the other thing we can do, we've also added point-to-point -point courses, like if you want to set up an autocross, or Nürburgring, for example, where the start and finish line is different, you can do that too as well. And of course, we have a new Bose Performance Series, which is with our 203LT package, 640-watt system, 14 speakers for a two-passenger interior. It's a lot of speakers, it sounds great. It's really, uh, we're the first sports car to have this new Bose Performance Series branded audio, and it really takes the sound to it to the next level. And uh, at one time they were, they were um, we listened to it, it's not as loud. And I said, well, we didn't think anybody would listen to it as loud. We're like, no, this is Corvette. We want it as loud as it can get. Of course, front lift is also another new feature. Um, front lift with memory, so if you have a steep driveway ramp, either at work or at home, uh, you can lift the car about two inches up the front, and it'll also, through GPS, store that location if you select it, so you, you don't have to remember to push the button the next time you're there. It's really a great feature a lot of people are excited about. So, um, we add, not too far from here at Kennedy Space Center, some people may have been there. We introduced the convertible late last year with the, the first mid-engine Corvette convertible with the retractable hardtop. And it's, uh, we have some on display uh, over there. We also have the silver car outside. Uh, we brought over, I forgot to mention that. We have a silver car if we want to see right here at the corral. But this car was really designed to have all the things people like about a coupe and with a convertible, with their checkable hardtop. As you can see, you can use it up to 30 miles an hour. The other nice thing about it, it, it folds over the engine. And so if you're on a trip and you have your luggage compartments full, you don't have to remove any partitions or set anything. You just, just push the button and go. And um, it, the other thing too, it has the same uh, roof strength requirements as the coupe. So it needs all the same requirements. Let's go to the next one. Um, again, here's another view of it, of it working here in the, it looks it's about uh, 16 seconds. The other thing we have is uh, in the, the rear window uh, can action in, act independently. So um, top down, you can put the rear window up if you want less wind buffeting, kind of like a wind blocker. Or on a cool day, you know, it's kind of nice, you can get more ventilation with the roof up, you can put that rear window down, you get more cross through, it's really a nice feature. Or if you just want to hear that exhaust sound a little more also. So again, we just looked at it. If you look at um, convert mid-engine V8 uh, sports cars that have a retractable uh, hardtop convertible, there's really only three and the other two are about three times the price as ours. So we think we have a good market position there. And then if you look at the advantages, there's a lot of advantages versus the previous soft top. I mean, there was concerns about um, durability of fabric or break-ins, people were worried about that, fabric creasing, you don't have to worry about those kind of things anymore. Uh, looks great top up and top down as well. And of course the, um, the the storage uh, situation where now the, the convertible is the same storage room as the coupe, and even with the top down. I think I have just a few more pretty pictures here. There's the orange one. Now we call the, um, behind your head, there's the, the fairings there and the carbon flashes. We call those nacelles. Nacelles. Like anybody watch Star Trek? Yeah. The engines? Yeah. You know about the cells? Or... Alright, go to the next one. <laughs> this is like, go to the, go to the next one. Speed up a little 
So you can get those in three different options. There's really three different configurations uh, depending on your taste and what you like. You can order. You can order full body color, which is standard. You can order a, a carbon flash roof with carbon flash nacelles. So you get the whole uh, upper, kind of the black upper, including the eight pillars and windshield frame. Or there's an in-between, uh, actually the yellow car um, on the turntable at the Experience Center has the one at the bottom, and it has the carbon flash nacelles that keeps the body color roof and eight pillars. So anyway, there's three choices you can get and available with all the, you know, with any color, and that really, um, you know, you can really customize it to how you like it.
by the design team. And again, all of our accessories are designed by the same designers who designed the car. But these double bags are meant to either fit in the rear, side by side, or in the front, one on top of each other. And if you look at them, they actually mimic the leather of the car seats. So they did an excellent job of trying all the details of the interior, the colors, the hardware that's on the back, mimic the hardware that is in the car. And all of our accessories, again, are designed, engineered, and validated by the same team who actually works on the production car. And you go get your warranty three years, 36,000 miles, if you add on those LPOs when you order your vehicle. I'll hand it over to Hugs and see what the response. Yeah, so um, obviously this is a big exciting day for us being the first race of the C8R. Uh, a lot of people saw the car in testing with the camouflage on there. And um, we actually introduced the race car at the same time we introduced the convertible at Kennedy Space Center. So here's the uh, race car actually at the Kennedy Space Center uh, doing its thing which is pretty cool. Maybe one day we got to stage a race there. I don't know. <laughs> Track day. Track day, yeah. So go to the next one. So uh, we have some of the graphics. Well, I'll let Kirk talk about some of the graphics on the race car. Uh, just morning, everybody. Uh, our partnership with Pratt Miller on this car started at the very beginning. So as we were developing what you know as the C8 Stingray, we were taking learnings from the race team and interjecting those into the car at the time. So, like I said, a lot of development time with us and the race team on the bodywork of both the base car and the race car. Now, as you can appreciate, you know, the graphics of the race car, those, that's always an emotional decision and uh, there's usually a lot of energy around it. And we, we have no less than, I would tell you, 50 different concepts of what the race car can look like and different color combinations in that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we, we really felt you know, retaining the, the yellow was very important. You know, it, it's part of our heritage. But we wanted, you know, this being a new car and everything, we brought in the dark silver. Uh, we like the fact that the two cars are identifiable on the track and that. And it's, here again, it's kind of breaking new ground for us. And that, but we're, we're excited to see them here today. You see some of the artwork that was released for, for that. It's actually a poster now, I believe. All right, thanks. So now um, I'm gonna finish up by bragging a little bit. We're usually very, you know, conservative, very humble. But it's nice to brag once in a while. So of course you've seen the new Corvette on lots of magazine covers. Let's go to the next next one. Motor Trend did a comparison against the Porsche 911. Of course, most first place Corvette. No excuses, no compromises. Porsche 911. It's found wanting their words. That's Motor Trend. Next one. Ward's engine. Ward's uh, does a thing every year, 10 best engines. So even forget about the car, the new LT2 V8. They said it's the best, uh, one of the 10 best engines in the market. So that's a great long live the small block. I cannot agree more. Next. Edmunds rated a top rated uh, sports car for 2020 in the Edmunds uh, guide, which is a very trusted uh, guide online. Let's go to the next one. And a car and driver, uh, 2020 uh, car and driver, Corvette is one of the 10 best, making the Corvette the first car to have 10 best as both a front engine car and a mid engine car. So it's really cool. And I like their, um, I could go back a second. I like their little quote they said, uh, C8 shows what this company can do when it puts its corporate heart into something. And of course, I think that we're all proud as members of the team. We're also proud of Chevrolet and General Motors that gave us, you know, the authority to do this car and bring this car to you. It was a dream for Kirk and myself and the whole team, Taj, of course, uh, for a lot of years before we kicked that out, but it was a lot of dedication and a lot of support from our leadership that allowed this to happen. And so um, I think that statement means a lot to all of us. And then Motor Trend uh, Car of the Year, Again, a great, great award as well. It'll be the Motor Trend Car of the Year this year. And um, finally, um, just last week, North American Car of the Year was awarded to the new Corvette. We're very proud of that and uh, winning all these awards. Now we just have to get.
get these cars to you guys so you can drive them. And then the, speaking of that, the first uh, retail 2020 Corvette was, showed, was purchased by our friend Mr. Rick Hendrick for a cool $3 million, which goes to the Detroit Children's Fund, which is a great charity which helps education for the children in Detroit, which uh, means a lot to us being from that area. So um, we really thank Rick for doing that. And he really owns a piece of Corvette history, being the first customer mid-engine Corvette as well. And so uh, the question is, so what, I'll just close, it, close up and we'll open some questions. Um, we're all set up to start production in February. And our goal is to, to try to uh, get cars, start shipping out of the plant by the end of the month is the plan and again um, you know things start to change and if they do it's because quality is so important to us we know this is our best chance to make a great first impression with this car being an all-new car and we want it to be as perfect as we can be before you guys have them. so I think you're really gonna love them but if there's anything a lot of it is just to make sure we have everything that's you know what do you call it these cross that's I's dotted whatever to get the uh, get this car as quickly as we can. So be patient, we're gonna get them to you, but um, we're very excited, we're very close on the doorstep of getting these cars out to you. So we're very proud and, of, of being able to do that. So uh, I think we have time for a few questions. Okay, question is when can you see the Accelerate yellow uh, car upstairs? I'm not sure. It's open. Yeah, so you will be able to see that now. Okay. You have to, like, you need to enter through the rear of the building to take the staircase off, so any of you can go look at the Accelerate yellow vehicle. And the uh, question was, uh, you know, we did the C7R edition. This was a great car. That, uh, that we did previously, especially we're going to do a C8R edition. You know, we're always scheming. <laughs> no announcement at this time, but you never know. Just it's just the beginning, so no suggestion. Yeah. Is the compared to the coupe, it's basically just about identical. It's based about 75 pounds difference, and it's about the only difference, really. So you get the same um, performance overall to convertible, which is really what was one of our goals. We didn't want the convertible to be seen as any less performance oriented than the coupe as well, so good question. Okay, questions on, the, we call it the rear camera mirror. And it's really a great feature. Um, I really like it. So what, how it works is um, you can, your rear mirror, in, in normal condition, it can function as you're used to, electrochromic uh, auto dimming mirror. And then you flip it, it turns into a high resolution video screen. So it's like you get a perfect view behind you. You don't see any of the pillars, any of the blockage, anything. It's really uh, opens it up so you can see what's going on behind you. Because that, there's always in a Corvette, there's some stuff going on behind you. <laughs> so you can see, it's such a good resolution, you can see the frown on the Porsche driver's pet face as you pass them. <laughs> so I think everybody's gonna enjoy that feature. It does happen, I think people like, I, I, I think you have to drive it because most people have like, the first day you have it, it takes, you gotta get used to it. It's just a little bit different global link than you're used to. But after about that first day, it's like, you don't, you'll never wanna go back to the regular mirror. You get, you get like dialed into it. And uh, so I have when you get there, you know, give it like, give it like a day, driving around for a day before you make an impression of it and kind of get used to it and then you love it. It's really, you really can see great. Yeah, no blind spots. You can also, um, 
adjust the, dim the dimming of it. You can zoom it in further or out. And you can adjust the height of the camera. So like I like to do, like some people might, you can, you can adjust it so you can just barely see the rear edge of the car. Just give you a, you know, a frame of reference. But however you like it. So it does give you some options as well. question is, will we do a delivery at the Chevy Experience Center? I think that was something that was proposed a while back that we looked at. I mean, we can look into that again. I don't, I don't know how that felt, that felt through or whatever, but I, I, uh, it'd be kind of a fun experience as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either, but we definitely want to support the National Corvette Museum delivery as well, which they do an excellent job. And anybody, if you talk to anybody that's done the museum delivery experience, everybody says it's one of the greatest things you can do as well. So I do recommend that if anybody has interest. Okay, question is, can we fill all the 2020 orders? Will some of them become 21s? Uh, some of them, we probably will not be able to fill all of them. Um, Again, it depends on the dealer, so ask around, but, you know, due to the um, work stoppage, delay, whatever, obviously the model year is shorter than we had thought, so um, there will be some reduction for 2020 model year average. We're not going to delay the 21 model year, but so um, I would encourage people, if they can't get on the 20 list, a lot of the dealerships are starting a 21 list, which will start more of the normal... Uh, model your timing that we're used to. But you follow up. Yeah, so most of the deal questions will go through. I would double check with your dealership, but in general, most of them are doing that. They're adding, if they can't make you for 20, they'll put you on 21. But I would I would double check to make sure your dealership is doing that for you. But that's, what, that's the instructions that um, Do you know when the tours are going to be opened up at the plant again, and do you think they'll be open by the bash? The question on the plant tours, um, again, that's more of a Kai question, but when I talked to him last, again, I don't know if this is going to happen for sure, it depends, but we had kind of a goal to get them going by the museum bash, so the people go, they could do the tours. Again, I don't, I'm not taking a confirmation or anything saying that's 100% going to happen, but that's kind of an internal goal we have to try to get them going again uh, by the batch. So, but make sure we check in before you know for sure. <laughs> All right, our next guest is here, Mr. Ron Fellow. So maybe I'll get just one more. Okay, who wants to be the last one? You might have to come up. Johnny's not around, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to bring up our pal, Ron Fellow. <laughs> 